this week on Jeb and Flow. I don't know what we're talking about, to be honest with you, but I guess you could call it my birthday episode. I'm turning 40. 40 by the time you see this episode. So there's a few things that I've learned in my travels, and there's a few places that I still want to go. And on this episode, we're going to just get into that, talk about that, what that number, that sneaky little number 40 actually means, what it should mean, why it should maybe have less meaning than it does, who knows? Tune in, it's gonna be fun. Hello everybody, welcome back to Jeb and Flow here on the Street Parking Podcast channel. Let's start with two. Just two this week, two big deep breaths. Close your eyes, sit up straight, take a breath in, fill your belly, hold it in, breathe in a little bit more, slowly let it out, push a little bit more air out, and repeat, breathe in. Even bigger, even fuller, a little bit more. Let it out even slower this time. Blink your eyes open. And here we are. So, you guys, by the time this episode comes out, I will have just had my birthday. My birthday is coming up. 40th birthday. So crazy. I do not feel like a 40-year-old. I don't know what a 40-year-old is supposed to feel like, but I used to feel like that was so old. And now I still feel like uh, kind of a young idiot, which is good. I like feeling like that. Um, when I was a kid, really small, I remember my dad came home from work and he had all of these cards, like birthday cards and stuff. They had thrown him a party at his office and all these cards said over the hill on them. You know, like a little banner that said over the hill. And I was like, what is that? What does that mean? And he had to explain to me that. That's what 40 is. They say once you're over 40, you're over the hill. Like like everything just starts kind of going downhill after 40. And uh, so I guess maybe that's where the seed got planted. But in my mind, it was like, oh, well, after you turn 40, you just kind of start, you know, deteriorating. And... Luckily, I don't feel like that is the case. Growing up in Colorado, uh, I used to do a lot of hiking and mountaineering, and I loved it mainly because you just, I mean, it's kind of boring sounding. You're just walking around and going up, and eventually you're at the top of a mountain. But there's something more to it. You know, it's beautiful, you're out in nature, you see cool stuff, you see wildlife, and there is some primal satisfaction in reaching the top of a mountain, especially if it's the highest mountain in a range and you look around and you are above everything. Now, usually when you go on a hike like that, what happens is You will be hiking and you'll look up and you'll see the summit, right? You'll see what you think is the peak. And you keep hiking and you're like, all right, cool, we're almost there, almost there. And then you get there and you realize that you're nowhere near the top. And it's what's known as a false summit. And they can be very discouraging for a lot of hikers and um, especially, I think, if, if people are on really more extreme, higher elevation, longer duration type hikes. You think you're almost there, you're tired, you're running out of water, and then you get to what you thought was the summit and you look up and you're just like, oh, 
there's so much further to go. But for me, I look forward to this false summit in my life. I feel like 40 means really nothing. I mean, there's just a lot more that I need to do, that I want to do, that I'm excited to do. But it's an interesting, the, it has a, a connotation to it, I guess, a stigma to it. And it's funny. I think that's fizzling out. By the way, I don't really have a whole lot of uh, direction that I want to go on this episode, but I felt like since it was or is going to be my birthday, that I just wanted to talk about kind of what it feels like to, uh, to be 40 and to look back kind of on my life a little bit, where I was, how I got here, what's happening in my life now and where I'm going to go. You know, I think if you've been listening to this for a while, you know that I am I'm now sober. I obviously at one point in my life was not. So when I was 25, I was waiting tables in uh, San Diego. Worked at a restaurant in San Diego, was getting back into school, mainly just kind of partying a lot. And I remember, I guess, it's so stupid, I guess having what they call a quarter-life crisis, which is when you turn 25 and you're like not satisfied with where you are, which looking back is so ridiculous. But I remember the night of my 25th birthday, or the night before, right? So at midnight, I was alone in this house that I was renting with a couple other guys. But I was alone in my room. There was a surfer pad, you know, just like falling apart. And I was super drunk, and I was angry, as I was a lot of times when I was drinking. Angry that my life wasn't working out the way that I felt like it should. Angry that I was 25 and still hadn't graduated college. Angry that I was in San Diego and had not made it to LA and my rap career had not taken off yet because I wanted to be a rapper. That's right. And angry for all of these things. Angry that nobody understood me. And so I started putting cigarettes out on my chest. And I remember saying, this is my 25th birthday present. And I was putting out cigarettes on my chest and trying to kind of enjoy the pain, but honestly was pretty hammered. So it didn't hurt that bad. And even though I was under the influence, I just will always remember that going into work the next day and being bummed out that like, I don't know, I was 25 thinking that I was getting old and that I wasn't where I needed to be. Well, I got sober at 27 and ever since then, my existence has been kind of uh, catapulted, rocketed into a fourth dimension, as they say. But looking back at that night that I was alone and, and self-harming myself, that was 15 years ago. And if you had told me that in 15 years, you would be healthier, happier, more fit than you have ever been, and that you got a weekly platform where you got to put a mic in front of you and a camera in front of you and pretty much say whatever you wanted to whoever would be willing to listen. And that of some of those people that were willing to listen, they reached out and told you how your words and how your message had positively affected them. And they had integrated some of that stuff into their life and into their relationships. If you had told me all of that, I wouldn't have believed you. And that's why I wanted to like, you know, 
be a rap superstar was because I had words. I had words and I had things that I wanted to say and I wanted people to hear my message. It wasn't about anything other than that. And that's what I get to do. If you're paying attention last week, hike your own hike. I got to a place and where I am right now, I get to do the things that I have always wanted to do. It just doesn't look like how my moronic 25-year-old self envisioned it. It looks way better and it feels way better. So as I enter this fifth decade of my life, I'm trying to think about and appreciate all of the experiences that have led me to this place, the good and the bad, because there are lessons in all of them. And I'm trying to take a look around at everything that I see in my world right now, which is surrounded by incredible people that are smart, that are talented, that are passionate, and that honestly share a lot of the same values that I do. And, you know, my birthday is October 2nd. Last year, I got the best possible birthday gift you could ever get, and that was my daughter, who was born on the 3rd. So I get to celebrate her birthday. And honestly, that is my birthday present. Carolina asked me, what do you want for your birthday? And I was like, to give Callie a, a good birthday, you know? For me, birthdays are just kind of another day. I've had some good times, some crazy, crazy birthdays. Uh, and I've had some birthdays that were just terrible. I worked 16 hours, you know? Uh, it's just another day. It's just another day. But the what I do like about my birthday is I like to take it as a time and opportunity to just think about where I am right now and how I got here and where I'm going to go. Where I'm going to go is kind of up in the air. Who knows? But what I do know is this. Right now, I know myself better than I've ever known myself. I know that I love to learn. That is my favorite thing in the world to do, is to learn. And my second favorite thing in the world to do is to share what I learn with anybody who will listen. And I get to do that on a daily basis. So I can tell you with complete confidence going into this fifth decade of my life, being over the hill, which really was just a false summit because there's many more hills to climb, that I am 100% just getting started. And I am super excited about that. So I am really happy that I'm turning 40. I'm really happy to be 40. I am really excited for what this decade is going to bring. If I look back at what the 20s brought and then what my 30s brought, I mean, this decade is going to be so epic. It's unbelievable. And I'm excited to share that with you. So that's all I got except for my action item. My action item, you got to give me a birthday present. Let me tell you what I want from you for my birthday. Two things. I want you to love yourself. And I want you to love others. 
So this week, I want you to do this for yourself, but if you don't feel like doing it for yourself, do it for me for my birthday. Do one thing this week to show yourself some love. And do one thing this week to show your love for someone else. And if possible, if you think you could handle it, that person should be somebody that you have a problem with. Somebody that you have a disagreement with. Somebody that you maybe just don't feel like you align with. Do something that demonstrates love for that person. Thank you so much. I love you. I'm so excited for today, for tomorrow, for every day after that. Thank you. I'll see you next week.